this little baby started to sag. So I gave it another use. Hi flower friends, it's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm. I'm growing cup flowers for sale in upstate New York, zone 4B. And today I'm talking about marketing. So about a week ago, I published a video all about how I market my farm here. I'm a, I'm a formal, well, I'm a former journalist and uh, news person. Currently, I work in communications professionally. I'm also a photographer and a videographer. And, and so I know a little bit about marketing. So I asked you guys what marketing questions you had and you guys came through. I got over 150 questions from you guys on all the social media platforms and DMs. So I'm grabbing a few of those questions that I feel like maybe I'm qualified to answer. I cannot answer all of them. Otherwise we'd be here all day. We don't have that kind of time. So let's dive into some questions. We're gonna start with Jenny. Jenny asks, marketing material. Have you printed any? Do you think you need physical marketing or is it just online marketing? Do I share business cards, etc.? Okay, Jenny, so I, the only physical things that I have are, well, there's two things. There's my business cards and I'm actually having those redesigned. I uh, don't love them. So I have my business cards and I also have gift certificates. So those aren't really marketing materials the way like the gift certificates are just mailed to the people who bought them. The business cards, however, are a marketing material, but usually I just tuck those in to a current customer's order just so they have my information in case they need to get a hold of me or want to buy something again in the future. A lot of people just do e-cards for gift certificates, but I know a lot of my customers don't have home printers and stuff like that. I mean, I keep track on a spreadsheet of who has gift certificates here on the farm, but I know a lot of my customers love to have something physical that they can bring with them. So I have um, on cardstock printed out Flower Hill Farm gift cards and I fill it out and I send it to them. And uh, I know people like to have this and then they'll bring it to the farm when they need to use it and I can write on the back of it, I can take notes on my spreadsheet, etc., etc. But as far as printed materials other than my gift certificates and my business cards, I don't have anything. Perhaps though, if you were visiting a florist for the very first time, you might bring a printed out flyer, maybe a little bio, a little history of your farm, some photos of you in the field, and some pictures of what you're growing. That would be a good reference for the florist in case she was interested in getting a hold of you. The second part of Jenny's question asks about websites and online marketing. I have a website and I personally think a website's very important for a business to have. I'm not saying you couldn't operate your business just using Instagram and Facebook, but I think it's important to have that presence that's all your own. It's not operating under what Facebook and Instagram tells you you can do. This, the website, you could just make your own, make it look exactly the way you want. It's a representation of you as a brand. So my website is through Squarespace. I pay um, a yearly fee to have that. I think it's around $200 for the year. And that I think includes my domain name. If not, the domain name's an additional $20 a year. It's also a place where customers can come and get to know you. And I like it because it's a one-stop shop for all of my merchandise. I have bouquets you can order on there. I have my CSAs you can purchase on the website. All of my stuff is available on my website. I have a lot of customers who do not use social media and this is a place where they can get all the information that they need. Repka's question is next and Repka wants to know how I interact with the customers during the off season. Interacting with your customers during the off season starts in the season. So I will take photos of my product from five different angles. I'll take five different photos. For every one photo that I post on my social media, I am putting five others in a folder, tucking it away to use for brand new content during the off season. I've done it before, but I don't like to recycle pictures, photos, content. I don't like to recycle it. I want my customers to see something new when they see my posts on social media. So maybe I'll take a close in zoomed in picture of a specific flower inside of a bouquet. I'll post the picture of the bouquet and keep that specific flower picture tucked away on my desk, on my desktop, on my computer, saving it for a rainy day. And this year I'm super organized guys, super organized. Like I've got like tulips, zinnias, like I've got folders upon folders. So I need to know where all of my extra footage is. So now I know I really like to post a picture of a tulip today. Let me go into my tulip folder and check it out. It takes maybe an extra 45 seconds or a minute to organize it like that during the season, but you will thank yourself a thousand times for being so organized during the off season. So you can just go in your folder, grab a photo. You can even rename it, say 
Tulip 23 used. That way, oh, I posted that picture two months ago. Posted it, on to the next one. Label, label, label. It might take a little bit more time up front, but it's gonna save you time in the end. The content that I use in the off season, I'm always having my customers looking forward to something else. I'll even ask them, hey, what color tulip should I be buying for next year? What do you guys wanna see? It doesn't mean that I'm necessarily gonna take their advice and use it and spend all of my money and tell, okay, say they want red tulips, buy all red tulips, but it's just a way of interacting. And when a customer interacts with you, it makes them feel involved in the process. They're, they're now a little bit more invested in your farm. Elizabeth said she's starting a flower farm this year too, and she's very curious about how pricing is determined, especially if selling to a florist. So the way that I price my stems when I'm selling to a florist is very simple. I use something, and I've said this before, it's the Boston USDA Wholesale Florist Price List. Now this might not have every bloom on the list that you're growing, but it does have, oh, at least 30 different varieties of flowers and what they are selling for that day. This price list is updated every single day. It might not fluctuate that much, but it will throughout the year. So say you're wondering what to sell your scabiosa for, and there's no scabiosa on the list, but maybe there's gomfrina on the list. That's a comparable filler, and you can say, okay, this bunch of 10, usually they're in 10s, if they're not, they'll be specified that maybe some flowers will be a group of five or something like that, but typically it's a bunch of 10, and that price point will be for the 10, say it's $7.50 for 10 Gonfrina. That's the wholesale florist price list. So that would be comparable to what you should be charging your florist. Elizabeth is also wondering about when to start her CSA because she's not gonna have flowers available until the end of May, wondering if that's too late. No, that's not too late. That is the perfect time to start your CSA shares. Miranda wants to know if you're supposed to provide customers with water when they're leaving your property with an arrangement or you're leaving your farmer's market with an arrangement. I mean, I guess you can if you want to. I do not. Some people will sell the mason jar with the bouquet. Mine are straight bouquets with just a rubber band. I don't even use craft paper. And that's for a couple of reasons. A, I don't like garbage. I don't like waste. I like to be as waste free as possible. In my experience, people just take that craft paper out and throw it right in the garbage and that's just, it's extra garbage for me. I don't even use paper napkins or paper plates at my house. We use all reusable things. So that's just a personal choice of mine to not use the craft paper. I did on one occasion last year on Mother's Day use tissue paper around the bouquets and I, I felt the need to be a little bit extra fancy, but I don't typically do that. Not only does it save me money and time, it also saves the customer from getting rid of that trash. That wasn't your question. <laughs> okay, back to the question. Water, no. I do not send my customers home with water. There were two occasions last year that a customer was traveling two hours away in a hot car in the summer, and then it was at that point that I moistened a paper towel and I wrapped it around it and I sent them with that. But on the average day, I don't send the customer home with anything but a rubber band, and if there was something that was uh, more environmentally friendly and more cost effective, I'd use that. I did actually, I have a lot of yarn because I crochet. I did actually start off tying my bouquets with yarn last year, but it just, it was taking so much time. So I compromised and ended up using rubber bands. Barbara wants to know if I give free samples to florists. Personally, Barb, I have a very small hometown florist. I already knew her, they already wanted my flowers. I didn't have to do that. I would definitely recommend if you're walking into a florist looking to get their business, show up, like as Lisa Mason Ziegler says, show up with two armfuls of flowers and walk in and say, here's what I grow, these are for you, here's my information, let me know what you think. I definitely think those free samples could very well get your foot in the door. Sharon's asking which flowers bloom first and bloom fast. Well, Sharon, she wants to get people excited about the season and have them coming back later for blooms in the summer. I will tell you right now, bulbs are the way to go. I will have my tulips and I will have my daffodils. The very first thing that pop out that I will cut and that gets people excited for the season. It gives them a taste of what's to come. They're, the pops of color are everywhere. I mean, it gets me excited. Once they get that taste of fresh flowers, they just want more and they get so excited for what's coming for the rest of the season. Sharon is also wondering how I advertise for my 
bouquet bars, a pop-up bouquet bar. So I advertise that on social media. Sometimes I take out a $10 Facebook ad and that would show it to a couple of thousand people within a 15 mile radius of me. T. Joe wants to know, is attitude everything? Yes. I'm gonna say, yes it is, 100%. You can't be negative and come up with a thousand different excuses of why it's not going to work. Attitude is everything. Great question. I have a question now from Maggie. She is a nurse and she's retiring in a few years and she's asking what she should plant now. Um, uh, peonies? Hydrangea? Anything that's a perennial that is going to take a few years to establish, you can put those in the ground now, ignore them for three years, and three years from now, they'll be working for you. Oh, my battery's dying! Okay, I have a fresh battery, so we should be good for a few minutes. Okay, next questions. These ones are from Instagram. Okay. Katie Sloan Martin wants to know how I plan for my bouquet bar. How do I know how many people are coming? So on Facebook, on my Flower Hill Farm Facebook page, I will create an event. So I will say what time it's happening, what's the location, what am I having? And then people can RSVP or at least say if they're interested. You guys have all seen that online. If you're interested in an event, you click on it. That doesn't mean you're gonna go, but if I have like 50 people interested, and maybe I can assume that 20% of them might actually stop by. So that's, it's really hard to gauge how many people are gonna be there, but once I'm sold out, I'm sold out. Except when it comes to gladiolas and sunflowers, then I run into the field and I cut more. How do you make a logo? Well, Jack, Jack, I, I didn't make my logo. I could have made my logo, but I, as much as I dabble in graphic design, I'm not a graphic artist and I wanted my logo to be professionally done. I wanted it to be all over the place. I wanted it to be on t-shirts. I wanted it to be on hats. I wanted it to be on my videos. I wanted it to be on my website. I wanted it to be everywhere and I knew I had to love it and I wanted it to be professionally made. So I bartered with a local graphic designer. I did photography and video work for her in exchange for this logo. Um, but. You know, you can get a logo anywhere from $5 on Fiverr up to, you know, thousands of dollars. So my logo was somewhere in the middle, but I definitely think it's worth it to have a professional take a look at your logo and, and make sure it's what you want. You don't want them to just make whatever they want for you. This was very carefully crafted. From me, I told her my vision and she brought it to life. Very happy with my logo. But Jack, I'll tell you, I didn't always have this logo. And when I didn't have this logo, I just picked a special font and I wrote Flower Hill Farm on all of my pictures with that font. So I'll, I have a couple examples of that. So it was literally just something on Photoshop Express and I just typed in Flower Hill Farm and that was my logo before I had a logo. I just really think it's important to um, label all of your images because a lot of people will steal your images and use them without your permission. So putting a logo on it might prevent that from happening. Razy says, if it's your first season, when do you start advertising? I think I've said this in a video before, I didn't start advertising for my flowers that I was going to have flowers until I had those flowers. Personally, I felt very strongly about only using my own imagery representing my business and my company. I didn't want to go online and grab some picture of a bouquet and say, here's what I have. I wanted to make sure that I was showing people the actual things that I grew. So I did not start advertising for my business until I had flowers ready to go into people's arms. Sherry wants to know, do you feel you need to explain why you chose your prices? People are rude and cheap. Yes, Sherry, people can be rude and cheap, but I have not found, I have not had anyone personally complain about my prices. Maybe they do when they leave my porch, but they've never said anything to my face. I think that I do a fairly reasonable price point when it comes to my bouquet bar. I give people the options to spend as little or as much as they want. I've actually had some people say, well, shouldn't you just have a price set point and say, here, make a $20 bouquet? I don't want to do that. I want people to come and not feel obligated to spend that $20. I have had a little girl come on my porch and make a $5 bouquet. And that $5 bouquet was all of the money that she had to her name. That $5 was more important to me than the person with the nine to five beautiful job that came and dropped 50 bucks. That $5 was my best customer of the day. She walked away with her head held so high I was so proud that she chose to spend her $5 with me.
The Little Flower Garden wants to know, how can you attract customers to your social media instead of followers? This is a really good question because I have this issue myself. So people always say, I sell everything on Instagram. I don't sell anything on Instagram. I have other flower farmers and other flower lovers from around the world following me on Instagram. I don't have customers there. My customers are on Facebook. That's where all my customers just seem to find me. So I don't post a lot of the, here's what I have for sale on my Instagram because it's kind of pointless. Those are people that don't live anywhere near me. So I focus my actual what's for sale on my Facebook page because that's where my local customers are watching. Oh, and somebody else said this too, Facebook garage sale. Like if you're having a, a pop-up shop or something, post it for free on Facebook garage sale if the rules of your Facebook group allow or Facebook marketplace or whatever and uh, you could attract customers that way. Ski much lately? Me too. <laughs> Just kidding. Ski much lately asks, where can I find music for social media posts? Not too easy of a quest. So social media music is tricky because it can be copyrighted and you can get pinged with a copyright infringement if you use music that you're not allowed to use. So I'll give you guys a little bit of a tip. If you have a YouTube channel, you don't necessarily have to post videos. If you have an account on YouTube and you're commenting on this video, then you already have an account. If you go on the left-hand side, there's something called audio library. And that is a very, very expansive library of free music. Now there are some creators who only request that you credit them. So you'll have to put their name like music provided by, but it's free. Some will also have other stipulations that free unless it's monetized and then you can't. Read the fine print and you will quickly discover there are thousands of tracks that you can use for free. In fact, my theme music. That's a free audio library track. Don't use it, it's mine. <laughs> Isle of Blooms wants to know, since you married Brad Pitt, can you give me tips on snagging Ryan Reynolds? Well, first of all, we have to get rid of Blake. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Sorry, Lila, can't help you there. <laughs> this is not a specific question from anyone from this, but a lot of people ask me if they think having a YouTube channel has helped drive in business to my farm. And I will have to say that so far, I don't think it has because my YouTube channel was still very small. At the end of last season, I didn't hit 1,000 subscribers until sometime in August. So between August and now, that YouTube channel has grown that much. So maybe it will coming into this season. I know people are hearing about me now that I'm local, but I've also been in the local newspapers and on the local TV station. So there are a, a lot of avenues, but I can tell you that my CSA customers really enjoy watching the entire process. I find that to be the most special because my CSA customers will come onto my porch to either make their bouquet at a bouquet bar or to pick up the bouquet that I've made for them and they'll say, I've been watching that grow. I've been waiting for you to harvest that. That is an intense connection with your customer that is so organic, like it's just there. You cannot make that up. I think that is the biggest benefit of my YouTube channel with connections between me and my customers. I love them. It's like they almost become like family to you. I just had a coughing fit. I'm better now, I think. <laughs> anyway, that's all I have time for today. I hope at least the people who asked the questions got a little bit out of it. If not, I'm so sorry. I'm not an expert. I just do things. <coughs> Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you soon. It's my music. I'll kill you if you use it. Get out of here! Banana, 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 banana,